Yes, and we're right. on. Welcome to Unwind Time, episode 14, isn't it? I think. <laughs> episode yeah. 14. <laughs> and we have the lovely Regan, as always. And Hayley. And myself, Hayley. Hayley. <laughs> and the lovely Julian Pace is joining us today. Again, well, has he been on before? I yes. Have. My, have you? my yes. second time, I feel so He's special. He's returning. He's yeah. returning. And last time it was about Happiness Co and the launch party that you were having, and now that's happened. And so we want to go and delve deeper, but first of all, we really, really want to chat to you about team culture, because yeah, that's something that you've helped us here with at Your Social Voice. Um, so we have team culture sessions once a month with Jules, and we go through um, how to create a better team culture within YSV, and I feel like it's kind of really, really improved our teamwork, the vulnerability, like our interaction, and our relationship with each other. So we wanted to have you come on board and tell everybody what it is that you do and why you think that team culture is so important in the workplace. And then it'd be really interesting if we found out like what other companies you do it for, etc. But let's start from the beginning. Actually, let's start with the wine. Oh, the wine. Yeah. <laughs> wine Most importantly, unwind time. Wine. I'm just unwind checking time. that we are live and everything is going good. Looks like we are. We are live. Cool. Awesome. So the wine we are drinking today is a Cab Merlot. It's from Margaret River, and it's number eighty-five. It's called. Um, and it's produced in Western Australia, obviously. <clears throat> uh, yeah. What does it taste like? Lot of great detail. Yeah, what's it taste like? Give us some detail. Some substance. It says, it says produced with the aid of egg products. That's interesting. Oh yeah, weird, hey? Did you like it? So it's got like a it, yeah, it is actually. It's quite nice. It's um, very oaky, which is what I was going to say. And actually, says here creamy oak. Um, what do you reckon? Do you reckon it's? It's not bad. It's very smooth. Smooth. And it's your first taste is smooth. And it's quite fruity. Yeah, and it's, it's got here um, the fruity flavours and gentle fine tannins of the palate. So I was, <laughs> on, I was on the mark. I was on the mark. On the Great mark. explanation but, already. I know. <laughs> yeah. Straight off the bottle. Um, I'm not a wine connoisseur, guys, but, you know, I'm getting there. That's what the label looks like if you want to purchase it. I think it's like 15 bucks or something like that, so it's quite cheap. Um, but it's worth every penny. <laughs> All wine's worth every penny. What am I kidding? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, get yourself a bottle of that. <laughs> not tonight. I would say more tomorrow night because it is a Thursday. I'm already drinking. <laughs> and this is what we don't Quite promote. Delicious. No, we don't. We, we don't, don't promote, promote drinking at work. <laughs> no, but it is called unwind time. Just so, in that unwind time. You know, if you want to, if you want to drink during work hours, just hit us up and you can come on the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that should right. be irresistible offer. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. <laughs> should be, yeah. And that's yeah. the only reason you said yes to coming yeah. on to unwind exactly. time, isn't it? Yeah. Free wine. <laughs> nice cup or a glass of wine. Yeah. yeah. Whatever you like. Yeah. And great company. Yes. Yes. Of course. See, that's the most important part. Yeah. It's Great company. Um, so, Jules, tell us about um, team culture and you know a little bit about what you do here at Your Social Voice and why it's so important. Yeah, and it, it really is like culture really is everything of a workplace. And just that bit of banter just there about the wine and the tea and and that is such a big part of what makes great culture fun. Yeah, I, I talk about this a lot. We're all so rigid and we're all so black and white, and we don't have enough flexible thinking and flexible feeling towards what it actually means to have a great culture. Because mm. culture, your companies are made up by your people and your people are your greatest assets. Yeah. And one of the big things that you know businesses don't uh, know or are probably not aware of that so many, I see 75% of employees in Australia are disengaged in their work. Which means they disengage, which means they lack productivity, they spend more time going to the toilet in the lunchroom complaining about their boss, mm. whinging about circumstances rather than doing their best work. Mm. And if managers and leaders and, and business owners mm. can spend more time on culture, which actually increases engagement, which returns, I guess it's a return on productivity. Mm. And a really fascinating stat, and you should write this one down. For every 1% you increase employee engagement, you get a 2% return on productivity. Wow. So if you put 10% into how can we have a more engaged workforce through culture and relationships, we would get a 20% return on productivity. Mm. It's such a big part of, uh, of company growth. It's a part of relationships, mm. a part of what makes a uh, place people want to work. Mm. And, you know, we talk about generational shifts. You know, you've got baby boomies, you know, Gen X and, and Gen Y. Mm -hmm. 
and millennials, they want to work for a, a workplace that's dynamic. They want to work for a workplace that uh, appreciates them, that understands them, that respects them. Mm-hmm. And once companies start to do that, people start to do their best work. Not just for themselves, they do it for each other. And that's really a great culture. Not what you get, about what you give. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know, the last four or five, you know, the, the last five months that I've been working with Your Social Voice is that you can see that when we started, the, the dynamics to where we are now. It's the, a, yeah. the relationships, the diversity, the openness, the sharing, the mm. vulnerability. Because mm. workplaces are no different to life. We're so scared of being rejected, we're so scared of not fitting in, and we're so scared of not being good enough. Mm. But the more we can come comfortable with each other, to know that we have each other's back and we're going yeah. to do great work together. It's not about me, I'm the, I'm the superstar. It's about how can we do this together. Mm. And we've seen that already. Yeah, yeah. it's so true. Like, even the team here is more um, connected in a way. Like, we're, we're like a family now, right? Yeah. After having the, the culture um, the trainings with you every Thursday, or every month, once a month, every Yeah, every once Thursday. a month. And it is yeah. amazing, it's the difference. It's made a difference, definitely. It has, isn't it? And yeah. you can see that the relationships have got so much stronger. Mm. And what people are finding or learning in the sessions with you here, when we're relating it to work, it's all being applied outside of work too. Mm. Yeah, 100%. And that's what we're just blown away by. And seeing people that maybe have never um, learned about some of these like methods and what you talk about, just be kind of gobsmacked and take it all in and really value it so mm. much. So Because it, it makes sense across, like Hayley was saying, everything. Like When you're learning something, even though it's a corporate training and it's for the team culture, you take that home and you apply it at home as well. Because well, a lot of what you say in that room just... It's like an aha moment, everything he says. It, really, it is, actually. Everything you <laughs> like, say, things we oh, write yeah. down. Well, at, write that down. <laughs> at first, it's like, you think about mums. Yeah. They're always a mum first. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're always there. If you've got kids, you're, it doesn't matter what your job is or what you do, you're always a mum first. They mm-hmm. take that role very seriously. It's yeah. who they, part of who they are. It's part of their identity. When you think about workplaces, you're a person first. Mm, so, you know, how you do anything is how you do everything. And please write this down. You can't have a, a, you know, a double life. You're not like a secret agent, you know, a, you know, a double agent. I come to work and I'm this and I, I go home and I'm that. I see so many people struggle with this concept mm. of being who you are and being authentic and being real, how you are in your personal life, and then obviously having parameters in your workplace. But being authentic, being real, and companies that allow that creativity from their people yeah, win. Because people think people are motivated by money. They're not. Mm. Out of the top 100 companies in Australia, on average, just so you know, on average, pays linked number seven. So out of the top 10 things that it, it takes to work for the top 10, 100 companies in Australia, pay is number seven. Wow. Number one, if you don't know, you should know. Number one is happiness. Number two is relationships. So number one is I want to be happy. I want to be happy. And what links to happiness, as we spoke about so, uh, I guess, so much over the last five months, is Mm -hmm. being who you are. Mm. How can I have expression of my thoughts and my feelings in this workplace? And I know, again, they're valued, they're respected, and they're Mm -hmm. appreciated. That's all we really look for in life. And that's what I mean about how you do everything is how you do everything, anything. Because... In life, we want to be respected and appreciated and understood. In our workplaces, we want to be respected, understood, and accepted. Yeah. Same, same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And is that is the happiness coming from being fulfilled as well? And mm-hmm. that's from, is that, what does that incorporate? Like, is, is it a huge, huge, huge area? Mm-hmm. Well, one of the biggest things that, you know, brings 40% of our happiness is, is really, that, again, that a part of, that self-expression. Okay. So, so doing so really doing great just, work. There's a whole bunch of things that go into it, but one of the big things is I get to say what I think. I get to be a part of great projects. I feel like you know I'm making the workplace better by mm-hmm. who I am. Okay. Because it's not just this is the job and this is the outcomes. It's like what's my spin on? Oh, I have a great idea because it's authentic. It's all, it's real. We're not robots. And companies yeah. try. You can't. Please write this down. You can't manage people, but you can inspire them. Mm. You can manage process, but you can't, ins- you can't manage people. You can inspire them. That's why number two is so big, relationships. We all have a deep need for connection. Remember, these are all human behavior. Human behavior is always the same. We want connection. We want relationships. The companies that support great relationships through culture, which mm. is the interaction between peers yeah. and having leaders that generally care. Please write this down. If you're a leader or a manager, 
generally care about your employees. I'm talking about when you ask how they are, take a general interest and, and follow up and make sure they're okay. And don't just take an interest in their work, take an interest mm. in their life mm. because they are people first. So true. Yeah. So true. And that's something that Kim does quite well here. Yeah. Yeah, he, he does. He's great yeah, at it. He always takes, he's, he's not, you can tell when um, someone's interested but not really interested. Yeah. With Kim, if he asks how you are, he'll sit there and listen to you and he'll bring up things that you think that a manager wouldn't or a boss wouldn't remember, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so that's yeah. something. Yeah. You feel, you feel important. You feel empowered. Yeah, exactly. You feel yeah. like who I am matters. Mm. Mm-hmm. When I know that I don't need to, they make me. Because mm. it's not what you say. One of the biggest things I've ever built around a culture, just for a bit of background for people listening, I worked in government for 10 years and worked with over 800 employees and did a, probably about 2,000 hires in that time and, and a leadership team of six and it was an amazing experience. But what I learned so much about that journey, one is tapping into human potential, tapping into the resources which are great people mm-hmm. and inspiring them. And the second thing is it's not what you say, it's not what you do, it's how you make people feel. Mm-hmm. If you can make them feel inspired, feel engaged, feel like what they do matters, it doesn't really matter what you say or what you do. They will come to work and they will be engaged. They will be on fire. They'll feel that they want to make a difference. And it doesn't, mm-hmm. People are like, oh, but what if they you know, do the admin role? It's like it doesn't matter what role they do in the workplace. It's about how they feel about doing the role in the workplace. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not about them. It's about us. Really so true. So when you go into, so we know what you do when you come here, and obviously we're getting so much value. But when you go to other companies, are you going through the same process? What's the curriculum, <laughs> so to speak? Yeah, it's always very, uh, always very similar. But you know, we understand c- companies have their own uh, dynamic nature, and you know, all relationships are based on individuals. That's, and every workplace is different because all th- people are different. Mm-hmm. So we custom build our workshops. But the, I guess the format is very, very much the same, which is how do we create better people? Mm. And for all business owners and leaders and managers watching this right now, the more time you spend on personal development or human development or potential in your people, you'll get a return. So what we do at Happiness Co. is how do we try and inspire them to be the best version of themselves? Not just in their workplace, but in their lives. Because if they're happy in their personal lives, they will bring happiness into their workplace. If they're happy in their workplace, they will bring that more into their personal life. Because we spend eight or nine or ten hours a day, five days a week on the grind, in, you know, in our workplaces that we you know to you know, work and, and make money so we can live. We want to make sure that we're enjoying the process along the way. It doesn't mean that we're going to love every minute of the work because mm. it's not about that. It's about understanding the reasons why you do the work. Mm-hmm. And it's what we try and explain to people. A big one, it's not all about employees uh, in terms of their enjoyment and fun and happiness. It really is about employees taking extreme ownership. So for the leaders and managers watching this right now, it's not your responsibility to make your employees happy but you are a part of that process. It's really ultimately the employee's responsibility to make themselves happy because or engage or inspired, but great leaders, great managers help that process along. Mm-hmm. I have noticed that there has been a lot of um, kind of ownership of how we feel mm-hmm. in this whole process from when we first started to where we are now. And obviously mm-hmm. this is continuous training that we have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's something we really look forward to because we know we're always looking at how can we can improve ourselves and how can we own how we're feeling yeah. in the workplace and at work. Yeah. Uh, sorry, and at home. Mm-hmm. So it's awesome. And I think on that note, I think managers and leaders and business owners will understand this. People blame, they justify and they complain. Your employees will blame, they will justify, and they will complain if they're not happy. They'll complain about the money, they'll yeah. complain about the workplace, they'll complain about the conditions. And a great way to have a solution around that is getting you know, workshops in place that allow them to have extreme ownership. Because it's not what you have, it's who you become. And I think there's a big misconception in this in, in life, not just in workplaces, but in life. If you want more money, who do you have to become to get more money? What mm. skill sets do you have to develop to get more money? Mm. You don't just get more money just because you've been working there for six months. It's like, how can you level up? Or, you know, I talk about this in relationships. If you want, you know, this dream guy or the dream girl, who do you have to become? Mm, yeah. You, who do, what do you deserve? Because you get what you deserve in life. Mm. So if you want better outcomes and better results, we have to raise our standards as individuals and as companies mm-hmm. because... Just looking at the outcomes and the results of a company just aren't enough anymore. We need intentions of our people. We need the influence that we want to make. And we need a really strong why. 
people want to be inspired, so leaders need to inspire them. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. awesome. So if people were wanting to consider having um, you come in and talk about team culture on a regular basis, how would they get in touch with you with that? Just, uh, you know, <laughs> Happiness Co. I was going to try and say something funny just then. But <laughs> happinessco.org. So jump on the website, happinessco.org, or jump on our Facebook page, Happiness Co., and, and check, out, check out what we're doing. We're a social movement. We're all about social responsibility. We've been doing this work for a while, and again, inspiring, impacting, making a difference, not just in people's personal lives, but in their workplaces is, is everything to us, because... Mm-hmm. When I was in government, we did that well, mm. and we created so many amazing things from working on each other more, rather than focusing on the result. It's like compounding. Yeah. You know, you spend more time at the start working on relationships, yes, and spend more time working on building culture, yes. But what happens is you compound. Mm. So the companies that don't spend time on culture and relationships and, and developing, you know, engagement, they may get the results quicker for the first one, two, three, four months. But the companies that spend time on culture all the time, after the first five, six, as we can start seeing now at your yeah. social voice, you're starting to mm. see the return on investment. And then we start to compound and it gets you get there quicker, faster, with more power than mm-hmm. the companies that don't do culture at all. Yeah. yeah. And I have to tell you, Will, when it's you coming up or like a week before, they'll, everyone will think, oh, are you on this week? So mm. like, it's, Jules, it's Jules coming in this yeah. week. Yeah. It actually, <laughs> so we all do get really excited yeah. about it. Because we, we enjoy the sessions and we all come out really refreshed and motivated. Well, it's true. And we want to feel excited. Like, yeah. like we're, again, we're so all so serious at times. Yeah. So coming in for an hour workshop, you know, once a week or once a month, gets people feeling different. Remember, mm-hmm. not what you say, not what you do. It's how you make people feel. And for the managers and leaders that think they are great managers and leaders, you are. I'm not taking that away from you. But hearing it from someone else mm. sometimes makes a massive difference. It does. Like when you bring yeah. someone else in to really engage your people. Yeah. Great things yeah. happen. And we learn and get closer to each other because. Y- you also ask us questions and we don't have to respond, but we're finding yeah. that more of us are opening up and telling us little segments, telling people what segments of our life, which yeah. is making everyone just, yeah, that more open closer. vulnerability yeah. and it brings people closer. Exactly. Yeah. So it's, yeah, yeah, it's such a wonderful experience. Creates more of a family atmosphere. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I know this from working with so many people in corporate and I've worked with some amazing companies Australia-wide in this space of, uh, of culture development is... You would know what we're talking about, about when you go into the workplace and you feel like you have to be someone else. Mm. And if this is you and you're a leader and you're a manager and you can see this in your workplace and people are really reserved and really not in it together, you can't fake who you are. People yeah. want to be expressive. They want that. They, that's what they are in life. We're, we're creatures of habit. We want to do what we, makes us feel safe and comfortable. Mm-hmm. So allow them to because yeah. if you do, they will thrive and they'll actually get better. That's where confidence comes from. Mm. The, more, the more they can express how they feel and, and get results and see themselves growing, they will get more confidence and then they'll start to get more results and they'll do better things. And it's, 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 it's a natural yeah. attrition of, of, de- of people development, not just mm. on the results but on how you grow them. Yeah. yeah. And, and also, it's something now that we can see our team culture increasing, well, I, I don't know the right word, but just getting so much better, mm. that it's something that we also speak about when we're hiring and pe- new people are coming into the company. Yeah, we talk suit, about... Yeah, suit the culture and everything. Suit the yeah. culture, wanting to learn and grow and be a part of the things that we do here. Mm. Um, and just talking about how great the culture is, and that is a huge part down to you so yeah. thank you thank you that. and you know i think one of the funnest <laughs> the funnest workshops that we did was this is going to sound crazy for some of the workplaces now but the love languages yes oh, love yeah, the that love was languages. great so how, good. how you incorporate love yeah. languages into your people because remember we are we are based every single person on the planet is based around how you think feel and behave that's that's mm-hmm. it that's the that's the the real yeah, it's the real component of life people are people yeah and they want to be loved in their personal lives and they want to be loved in their workplace. How can we explore love languages so we know how we feel understood, appreciated and respected in the workplace? It's one of the greatest things that we've done mm-hmm. uh, with you guys so far. And every single company that we do it with, the love languages, mm-hmm. they all walk out and thinking, oh my God, it's really cool. It's really fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
It really is. That was, yeah, that was <laughs> Because really good. at first you start being overly using yeah, it. Yeah. Over- <laughs> but then, and then you over know, time, you, yeah, you start to um, pick up on people's love language, right? Yeah. Just by what they say and do and, yeah. And, and then you're it, like, yeah, yeah. And I'm finding that even you. I'm more like the touchy-feely touchy yeah. when it, for the people that do like that is yeah. their love language, yeah. that it is touch. And it so. helps with at home too, like with your own personal relationships yeah. with your spouse or your mum or dad or something like that. You can start to see the triggers and who they are and their love language. Yeah. Well, yes. so it's from from a it's workplace perspective, a, a leaders or a manager's perspective, mm. and from an employee's perspective, if employees don't think they're being appreciated, they become disengaged. Mm. But it's not it's maybe not because they're not appreciated, but maybe because they have a completely different love language. So if you're a leader and a manager right now and you don't give compliments to your employees and you appreciate them, it doesn't mean you don't appreciate them. But you may get, let them go home early on Fridays and you may buy them coffees in the morning and you mm. may buy them gifts or do acts of service or give them quality time in their personal development. That's how you show your appreciation. Mm. But the key thing about the love languages is if they aren't aware of these things, yeah. they just feel like they're dis- disengaged because they're unappreciated and they don't get the result. Yeah. yeah. And if you haven't read the love languages, it's um, a book by, is it Tony Chapman? Yeah. Is that his name? Yeah. yeah. So we could, we'll put a link into it um, in the bottom. Okay. I'll also put a link... Um, to your business page as well, Julian. So if anyone yeah. wants to, yeah, get in contact with you. Mm-hmm. But before we go, I wanted to talk about um, today, tonight show. You're on on Monday. Yeah, Monday night. Tell if us you're, about that. If you're not doing anything Monday night, make sure you tune in today, tonight. Uh, we've got the scoop uh, for the main the main segment for the today, tonight about. Happiness Co. about you know depression, anxiety, unhappiness. All about Jules, where it yeah. came from. <laughs> it's interesting. You want to know? Trust me. <laughs> A bit about the backstory of Happiness Co. Because yeah. what we do know is more Australians every single day are becoming more and more unhappy, mm-hmm. more and more disengaged. Divorce is going through the roof. Uh, you know, anxiety and depression uh, is going through the roof. And there's so many contributing factors to this. Mm-hmm. And Happiness Co. is in, is in the fight. It's, it, we're just part of the process of trying to make people's lives a little better, to try and help them find more happiness, more self-love, more self-worth. And the tools that we teach are about extreme ownership, about mm. you can't change circumstance. Mm. A lot of people try and find their happiness or their, their uh, self-worth or they yeah, want to feel inspired in their workplace because mm. of circumstance. Mm. You have to find everything you seek is internal. If you develop the internal skills, mm-hmm. all the external will get better. So the scoop on today, tonight, on Monday. Make sure you check us out, happinessco.org. Uh, I'd love to speak with you and your workplace. What time is it on? Uh, Just so I can know it's 6.30. 6.30. 6.30. Monday night, Tuesday we'll night. Watch, we'll be watching it. Yeah. We'll be there. I'll be there with my fangirl. Go Jules! <laughs> <laughs> go Jules, go Jules! <laughs> but seriously, make sure you invest in your most important assets. That's either looking at Happiness Co. to come in and do some training or whoever. Please, please, please invest in your greatest asset, your people, because mm. you will get a great return on investment. Uh, and as you can see, your social voice is, is starting to see that return now. Yeah, yeah and look, we can totally vouch for it. It's yeah. something that we're learning and growing as people mm-hmm. and as a team at your social voice. So it's, it's so valuable to us. So. Yeah, it definitely is. Yeah. And like I said, you can take it home too. Yes. It's not just for the office. You can take it and use it in your personal life. So. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you so much thank you. for coming Been again. Been a pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Oh yeah. See you later, guys. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Now you got to press it. No, we go.